The home point has been updated. Battery level is low. Wait a minute, before we start, welcome to ZZ Car Channel. If you haven't tried flying your Mavic Mini at night outdoor and think of doing it but with no guidance, this video might be a little help to you. Best to try it on a reasonable wide open space for first time and make sure you are familiar with the location and surrounding, especially tall structural, trees, power lines and so on so you will know how to set the RTH altitude accordingly or what's the minimum altitude to be considered as a safe height. Do check the weather and wind forecast as a reference as well. Please do give me a like if you find it useful after watching this video. And do remember to subscribe for more tips and guides related to Mavic Mini in the future. So these are all the items that I personally bring along with me for a night flight. You know this, 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 and this. And for these two, is subject to personal preference. This one is actually a citronella oil mosquito repellent for my kids. But I steal from them because they are sleeping now. In my country, mosquito is closer than a friend. They are basically everywhere outdoor. The after effect and disease is one thing. The distraction they make while you are flying will probably ruin your recording footage while doing some maneuver. As for this flashlight, it's multi-purpose and maybe for emergency use. Okay, so let's do the normal flight preparation. Aircraft has connected to the remote control. While waiting for the establishment of satellite connection, let's do some pre-flight setting check. Check the signal loss option, make sure it's set to your preference, adjust the RTH altitude. The highest structural around and close to my fly path are about 50 meter height, so somewhere around 60 meters should be sufficient. Check the channel transmission interference, wait for a while for it to refresh. Select a low interference channel. Do the compass calibration if needed. Unlock the authorization zone if needed. A sufficient satellite connection is very important for a safe night flight because the downward vision sensor probably might not work properly due to low light at low altitude when it's activated. Personally, I will wait for a stable 11 or more satellites. If you are at a relatively bright area, you should be able to take off without any warning. Do remember to apply the basic of the take off with a tailwind to the aircraft. If you think it's windy, as to avoid the aircraft took off and drift with the wind to your direction. With or without wind, the aircraft might not hover as stable as in daytime. It may move around itself a little bit vertically and or horizontally, depending on the accuracy of GPS or satellite and the type of ground surface 
and lighting condition for the downward vision sensor. If you are in a darker area, you will probably see this warning, which may make the aircraft to move itself a little bit more vertically and or horizontally during hovering. As long as you have sufficient and stable satellite connection and the cross proximity surrounding is clear of any obstacle, it should be fine. Right after takeoff, it's best to increase the altitude directly slightly higher above your height or the tallest person around the aircraft. So even if the aircraft move itself, all humans are safe below. Then do the normal last flight check like testing the remote control response on all direction, listen to any abnormal noise or behavior, check the home point on the map, zoom in and make sure your home point is where it should be. Check the RTH altitude just in case you miss it earlier and turn it on the airplane mode if you are used to it. Then you may enjoy the flight as usual. Treat the remote control stick gently, slow and steady even if you are in C mode so you will have time to react or stop if anything almost happen until you gain some confidence and get used to it. During the flight, again depending on the lighting condition of the entire area where the camera is heading. Sometimes if you find it is too dark on the mobile device screen live feed image, try increase the mobile device brightness. Or you can also use the photo mode instead of video mode. In photo mode, normally the auto camera setting will help to overexpose the image automatically. Or you can just go to manual setting, change the ISO to 3200 and shutter speed to 1 second or above. Overexposed would mean brighter and better visibility on your mobile device screen to fly around more safely and look for your photo or video subject. Once you have found a subject and set your angle or composition, you may then change the ISO and shutter speed to your desired setting. Hope you learned something from this video. Let me know if you have anything to ask related to Mavic Mini by commenting below. I will try my best to assist if I'm capable. Thanks for watching and hope to see you on my next video.